Namaste. Welcome to another interesting video in Docker series. So in the last video, we saw the to-do application, but there was a problem. We were not able to store our to-dos. Today, we'll fix that. We'll understand Docker storages and a little bit of depth. So I, I hope you are very much excited because I am. So let's get started. First, let's understand Docker storage at a high level. So when you create a container, Docker uses a union file system to manage the layers. Each layer gets its own writable layer, but this layer is ephemeral or it's temporary. Meaning, once the container is deleted, the data inside this layer is lost. That is the reason when we created our to-do application and when we tried to enter to-dos, it was there, but when, once we recreated it or we deleted our container, those were gone. So let's try to fix this problem today. So Docker provides four storage options, volume mount, bind mount, TMPFS mount and name pipes. We will be today seeing volume mount and bind mount. So mount means attaching. That is it. So we are attaching file system with container. Volume mount is something where data is stored on the file system of the host. But in order to interact with the data, you must create a volume and that volume will be attached to the container. So we, although we don't have direct access to the vo volume here, but this is the uh, best way as in Docker manages the volume over here. We just have to create the volume, name, name the volume as in remember the name of the volume and attach that volume to the container. Rest, everything is taken care of by the Docker internally. Next is bind mount. Now here in bind mount, what we do is we directly attach or mount our local uh, path like for example C temp or C devops or in our case let's say D devops demo whatever you can attach or directly map this folder to any folder file system in the container so this is this we will see as an example this will be useful when you have you want to do development directly from local to in, inside the container without building the image as in you make a change in the file here itself in the local system and then directly refresh it and the container will be running and then you will be able to see your changes. Then there is TMPFS mount system where it stores files directly in the host machine's memory ensuring the data is not returned to the disk. Now this storage is ephemeral that means the data is lost when the container is stopped or restarted. Okay, This is similar to the uh, basic option given by the docker when creating a container and the last one is name pipes and this is used to enable communication between docker host and a container now here the common use case is to run a third party tool inside the container and connect to docker engine api using a name pipe so for us important thing is to understand volume mount and bind mount which you will be using mostly and uh, the container file system that is anyways provided to you by default and it will be only useful as in the container uh, the basic one that is already provided that is only useful when you are doing some temporary stuff to check but as soon as you want to store something you want to persist some data you will have to use volume mount or bind mount we are completed till part 3 let's continue with part 4 before moving let's understand that our to-do apps data is stored in a file called todo.db. Now here they have used SQLite database. Of course, it is a I mean relational database, but it stores all the file in all the data in a single file called todo.db, and its location is this etc todos.todo.db. So we'll try to mount the uh, mount our local or volume to this path so that our data is stored. So let's create the volume. So this is the command docker volume create. We will name the same only. Before that, let's check if there is any volume existing docker volume ls or you can type list as well. All list, let me type both. So there are no volumes. Let's create volume docker volume create to do db. Okay, our volume is created. Let's check if it is there. Docker volume ls. Okay, we can see. We can see our volume is created. Now, let's map it. 
let's map it to our application so that we can persist our data. Now make sure if like me, you're using git bash or windows, use this command. Otherwise, this command will not work. Only difference is here, uh, the file system will have to use the escape character here. So we'll use this one. Let's try it. Let me clear the screen. Before that, let's see our, if our images are present. We'll be using this one, getting started app. So same, docker run hyphen detached port 3000, 3000. Now uh, to mount, let's type hyphen hyphen mount. Then we have to mention type equals to, we will be using here volume. You have to mention source and destination. So for source, we will just say to do app, sorry, to do DB that we created. Then for target, so for target, we will have to mention this path here, etc to do's. Now here, if you remember, we uh, our application stores data in todo.db and the path is etc to do's. So this is the path, etc to do's. We have to put one escape character, then etc to do's. That is it. And then the name of our container, sorry, uh, images, pardon me. So the command is simple. The initial command is save docker run hyphen dp 3000-3000. This is for uh, host and this is for the container. For mount, we will be using volume mount here. So that is where type is volume. In case of bind, we will be replacing this volume with bind. Then source and target. For source, we, we, we are using here the volume name to do slash to do dash db. Then for target, we will be using the path where our database is stored. Okay. And then finally, the image name. Let's run the container. The container is running. Let's see it in our browser. To close 3000. Okay. Now to check if it is working, let's add some to do's. File 1, Docker file 2, then Docker volumes. We have completed file docker file 1 to part 2 docker volumes is pending. So we have made some changes. They should get stored in database. So let's close it and let's see if it really worked. So for that what we'll do is we will first let's see uh, the, the containers first. We'll have, we will delete this and then again create it and then we'll again see if data is still there. So docker rm. So we will directly force remove it. If you are not uh, force removing it, you'll have to first stop the container. Docker rm like this and then hyphen f and then id. Enter. Let's confirm docker ps. Let's see if anything is there. Nothing is nothing is pending here. And the application should not work. Of course, it should not work. It, okay, it's it will not work. Now, let's do it again. Let's run the same command again. Now, remember, it should persist because we are giving the same volume and data is getting stored in the volume. Let's hit enter. Let's try again. See? The changes that we made are still there. So, good. We can work with this. Anything else that we are supposed to do? Okay, so if you want to inspect, so this is also one command. If you want to see docker volume inspect, some details or uh, details about this volume. Let's try this. It is in the JSON format. Now it shows mount point over here. Now remember, this is not the mount point of your machine. This is for the docker vm. So you can see where lib, it is not windows folder, folder structure or directory. It is uh, Linux uh, systems folder structure. But it gives detail about that. So this is in docker vm. So you won't be able to access anyways. But we can see other things like when it was created, driver type, options, scope, whatever. So this is one command. And we're done with this thing. 
Now let's move on and use bind mount. Let me clear this. Now what we will do is we will directly. So this is our. We are already in get, getting started app uh, folder. So this is our whole application. We will map this or mount this to Docker file system and do the development. So let's do it. So here is a quick example for volume mount. We use type as volume for bind mount. We use type as bind. Now for source, we used the volume name to do uh, dash db, and then for target, same uh, the path that we were using to do etc to do. In case of bind, we will be giving our local path over here, and target will remain the same. Okay. So here is a quick comparison. Now let's try it. Let's directly go to our application. Let's do this one. We are in Windows system, so we'll use this one. Now here, uh, let's try and understand this command first. So first line is same. We are just running the Docker container and mapping the ports 3000. Then we will say hyphen W, hyphen W is for working directory. So if you have seen my Docker files lecture, you already know what is working directory. We'll map it to slash app. Now you can see we are using double uh, double forward slash, yeah, because we will be we are using here git. But in case of Ma uh, Linux or Mac, we can use directly one single slash. Then again, same mount option that we saw in the previous uh, one volume type. Just the bind type is different, as in uh, the type is different. Type is bind here. Source dollar pwd. Now dollar pwd is present working directory. Let's see what is a present working directory. You can directly see here it should be this current directory, right? So you can directly say this path as well, but for shortcut of making the command a little bit smaller, we can directly use pwd, present working directory. Then target. Now here we will mention the target as slash app, this this path. We will be directly uh, putting it everything over here. Here we are mapping the present working directory as in this whole thing, this to app folder. After that, we are running an image that we will be using node image to run our application then we'll run the same command to run the application as in yarn install yarn run dev so if you have done uh, some if you have seen previous lectures we have run this command to run the application so let's do this now this will be very helpful so once we set this up we don't have to keep modifying our image to see if our latest application is running in previous lectures we saw to update the application we had to run the image again as in make the changes build the image again and then create the container in this case you can directly make any changes in the file here and then it should work so let's do this i can directly copy it but let's write it one by one so that we remember it and i would suggest while practicing do not copy paste just try to run the command so that it sticks in your fingers docker run hyphen dp 3000 3000 now remember i'm not mentioning this because it, anyways i'm running it on localhost now uh, to add more commands you always put backward slash that way the command is not executed and you should be able to add more commands hyphen w for workspace app now here the type that we'll have to mention now before that let's mention mount type is bind then same source and destination source we will be using this dollar present working directory then target target is app uh, remember to put this in double quotes and escape it so since, since source is windows we'll have to put the escape character here now let's move on to next line for that also same backward slash enter let's use the node image we will just use the same image let me copy it directly and backward slash now we will run this shell in the container and the command will be yarn install and then we will run it in dev so don't worry about these commands 
as i suggested earlier as well that these commands to set up locally will be provided by developers so as a devops engineer you just need to understand how to run it locally you don't have to memorize any commands uh, to compile the application so let's run this let's create the container using this okay what did i miss oh for working directories oh uh, so sorry i have we have missed the slash here it should be forward slash so run now so it will try to search the image locally and then of course it will pull it from docker hub now we are directly running it and mapping it to a local so while it is running what is the error now port is already allocated okay so let so so what we did is we were running already something on port number 3000 as in the previous image we haven't deleted it or stopped it let's first kill it so if not sure you can just check like this you can see this is already running on port number 3000 let's kill it okay this is gone let's try running it again okay it's successful now now let's see if it is running here now this should not be visible this is the older one that we are seeing let me refresh it now since we have created a new one every data should be gone all the data should be gone we refresh it again okay now it's visible now if we write something for okay so this is there this is working if you want to see logs for uh, understanding what is happening inside the docker container Let me first clear the screen. If we run Docker PS, this is our container that is running. To check the logs of what is happening inside the container, you can do like this: Docker logs and the container name. So these these are the things that happened, and it already. So if you see, yarn install happened. Uh, yarn was installed. Everything, and then here it says. Uh, application is listening at port number 3000 our database it is it is present over here it is to do now let's do the development part using this bind mark so we will we'll make any change here let's see what there's what example okay let's make the change in this file so go to source js app file Okay, here we have add item. Add item. We'll just say add. Just making any text change so that it is visible. Now make sure to save this file. Now, if you were not using Docker storage, it would have been multiple steps like compile the image and then check if your application changes are reflected or not. But here we have just made the change. We have saved the file and then let's go to browser. Our container is already running. Remember, it is already running. We'll just refresh it. Now see here, it is add item. It should be now just add in the button. Let me refresh it. You can see this is gone. It's just add now. Okay, so you can see how amazing the bind mount is for developers. You don't have to build the Docker image and then create a container again. And after that, you will see the change here. You can directly just make the change and see directly on the browser. So mainly volume mount and bind mount is something that is used to map the volumes the preferred one is the volume first one volume mount you don't have to manage the storage everything will be taken care by docker you just have to remember the name of your volume and then attach it or mount it to your application but remember there are other than volume mount and bind mount there are other volume mount types as well we for variable use cases but this is about it in this lecture i hope you were able to follow along as always if you have any doubts put that in the comment section i'll be happy to help till then keep practicing keep learning see you in the next one